So people, I wouldn't blame you if you looked at my channel two days ago and you saw the video I posted called Pronatalism, Why Life Makes Logical Sense and you watched that video and you decided that I had gone insane. Because in fairness, my video was designed to look like I'd gone insane. But don't just take my word on it. Don't just take my word that I designed this video to look like that and jump to the conclusion that uh, no, in actual fact, I'm trying to save face here. No, instead I would suggest that you look at my channel and you find the video Pronatalism, Why Life Makes Logical Sense, and then look at the video that was posted just before that. You know, order my videos in date order, by date added, and note that there is a video there that was posted before the pronatalist video, and that you haven't seen yet, which makes sense because it was unlisted until now. And just look at what I say in that video. In case you were in any doubt that what I did there was entirely deliberate. But what was I playing at? Why did I post that pronatalism video? Well, let's just explain then what I was doing. You see, I actually never knew about antinatalism. I wasn't even aware that antinatalism existed until I saw some people I like make videos arguing against it. Like, for example, Greatex or Barklord, who are posting videos trying to argue with the antinatalists. And then I found out a little bit about what it actually is, and I realized almost immediately that the whole school of... No, I'm not going to call it thought. It's just bizarre and logically incoherent. But what I also noticed is that while people such as Greatex spent an awful lot of time pointing this obvious fact out to the antinatalists, they were not hearing it. It was not getting through their thick skulls. And that is why I made the video the way I made it. Because I presented an argument and I called it pro-natalism. And I tried, at least, to base the argument I presented that I called pro-natalism, even though it has nothing to do with the actual philosoph philosophical position called natalism, that it's also sometimes called pro-natalism, I just call it that because I was lazy and I just wanted to give it a name that indicated that it was opposite to antinatalism. Okay? So shoot me. But anyway. The, the way I constructed the, this so-called pro-natalism argument was on a similar logical mistake as the antinatalist argument. And the basic mistake that both the, the real antinatalist argument and my false, my spoof, pronatalist argument are based on is the choice by the <clears throat> thinker to attribute value of any kind, whether it's positive negative or even, as one of the idiots called it, the great neutral, to not existing, to non-existence, non-being. That is the big mistake. That is the big mistake on which the whole antinatalist argument hinges. That is the thing that Great X, for example, has been trying to explain to these nut jobs. Time and time and time again, but it's just going in one ear. It's not even going in one ear. And I was hoping that by presenting this apparent counter argument, that perhaps maybe one antinatalist would look at it, try to debunk it, and stumble upon the correct way of debunking it. And then, here I was hoping. In a moment, in a flash of lucidity, 
they would the realization would dawn on them that the actual form of the argument against pronatalism made it suitable to undermine antinatalism in exactly the same way. I don't know whether I have gotten through to anybody doing that, but I see no indication. But just in case the argument itself, or in case it still doesn't make sense to you, I think the best way of maybe illustrating what I mean is by the little comment exchange I had only a short while ago with somebody who calls themselves Tranquil87. And it starts out with a repetition, because that's all it is. They keep repeating the same, they, almost, they even almost use the same terminology. It's like a mantra to these people. Non-existence is preferable to the miserable affair that is life. I think there are very few variations on that particular sentence. It seems to be that that is what their whole life philosophy is hanging on. And then he quotes somebody called E. M. Kieran. And it is a beautiful statement. Listen to this, folks. If it is true that by death we once more become what we were before being, that is just incoherent. So you cease to exist, and by doing so you become what you already were before you existed. You can see how the big logical fail in this particular case is that these people seem to think that non-existence is a state of being. That is, that's what it all boils down to. That's what the long and short of this whole pathetic misunderstanding hinges on is that they think that non-existence is a state of being. And E. M. Kieran continues, Would it not have been better to abide by that pure possibility, not to stir from it? What would be stirring from where? What use was this detour, when we might have to remain forever, remained, where, in an unrealized plenitude? E. M. Kieran was insane. But just in case, even this doesn't help you understand how badly the argument fails, let me read out to you the response I posted to this. And the way I suggested it to Tranquil87 was as follows. I suggested to him or her that we should be scientific about this. And this is what I'm suggesting. If you embrace, if you have adopted this <laughs> philosophy, okay, let's call it philosophy, if you have adopted this philosophy, that non-existence is preferable to the miserable affair that is life. Then let's do a scientific experiment. And this is the experiment. If that is your position, if you embrace that philosophy, then do this for me. You cease to exist. And then you let me know how you like it. How does that sound? And I hope that the answer to that question is insane, because that is exactly what it is. <laughs>